back into that. Yeah, I can't like start the recording. Oh okay, my hey, god! Blab. This is the it's recording now. This is it? great, and I hate you. Oh, like, it is recording. No, it's it re- is. Recording. We're already live. We're already no, live. No, no, no. We can't. This isn't right. <laughs> we sure? Because I didn't press start recording. Yeah, it says recording. Someone did it. <laughs> it just started. Okay, yeah. no to Audra. <laughs> beginning of this is balls oh my god okay somebody else needs to do all the talking at the beginning all right i'm gonna start the recording (laughs) i'm gonna start the recording now okay episode 206 go somebody else talk (laughs) so yeah we uh just got back from the smarter artist summit in texas and boy are our arms tired no you did not just do that (laughs) Oh, I figured I'd keep with the badness of this epic, horrible show. <laughs> yeah, just for, for those of you out there on the um, iTunes feed, we've been at this for like 20 minutes now, but are just getting going because Blab decided today that it hated Johnny, specifically in his Sterling and Stone account. Yeah, this is a great service, except when it is it? shit. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's great, except when it's shit. And then when it's shit, it's shit. So here we are. And we didn't yeah. want to do we, we didn't want to do a hangout today of all days because you know we <laughs> was like kicking him out again. What is this box in the uh, bottom right corner says drop in any link to spice up your blab? I'm afraid to see what that does. I don't think I want to spice up our blab. <laughs> right, I think we got enough spice in this episode already. That sounds more like a threat than an invitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. MG so. saying spice. So Dave, anything cool? <laughs> uh yes yes uh i got something cool um I, I got gifts from people danielle gave me a gift uh i don't know if she wanted her last name mentioned or not so she gave me uh an art book a giant cookbook some pens awesome stuff and i also got this from uh avery coburn uh she knitted something for me and uh gave it to me it was something that uh, we said in the Z2134 book, or one of those books, and um, also on the show, uh, a quote from Dave, hope will crush you with a, a little uh, teddy bear. It's a cross stitch. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. And, I, and, and my son saw it. My eight-year-old son saw it when I was unpacking my stuff, and he looked Did at Did he cry? Me. No, he's like, that, that girl's mean. <laughs> I said, no, she's <laughs> quoting me. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's... He doesn't know how what a sad man you are, right? What, what's no, going to happen no, when he no, gets no. older and listens to these or reads one of your books? Or, or just watches one on YouTube and it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, what's going to happen? <laughs> He's going to run away. It's going to be like a, a tragedy in a movie. Like, we're going to have to have a... Uh, it's a godfather or something. We're, we're going to have to have a, an emergency worst show ever the day that he accidentally stumbles across here. Uh, one, of, one of our many YouTube travesties. So was there... finally understand the basement. <laughs> so for my something cool, I just want to say, um, um, uh, our, Amy our... said it's a cross stitch. Did I call it knitting? Did I call no, it? No, you called it cross stitch. You called so. it cross stitch, but but only the second time. The first time was knitting. Oh, okay. But but he 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 corrected. Like I would know the difference. Um, yeah. So our 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 audience is just so um, amazing, and we could talk a lot about this when we talk about the summit. Um, but just, wow. Um, so just as one of many, many examples, I mean, Dave's cross stitch is one. I got a bad motherfucker wallet, <laughs> a decoy wallet, um, from, uh, uh, Sam Jackson's wallet from Pulp Fiction. That was really awesome. And I got a, uh, a, a cat. No one will remember this, but there was an episode where I was talking about my sister's cat screamy and somebody, um, well, her, her sister actually made, uh, a little stuffed screamy with a uh, with a button you push and it it screams, um, and that's just kind of fantastic. It's become it's Haley's a really disturb- disturbing scream too. It's not a yeah, it's scream. terrible. Yeah, it starts out rough and then it ends by going. <laughs> Did they do a, an actual recording of a suffering cat? Because that's yeah, they, horrible. She got it off YouTube. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> yeah, they're actual cat screams. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Um, and uh, it's become now my my Haley's uh, stuffed animal Boo and Screamy are ultimate foes. Boo's really pissed off that Screamy has, you know, is now sleeping in the bed and just it's it's been chaos. But anyway, um, that was really cool. Uh, it was Amy's birthday and and Patrick Stemp um, 
who is a, a long time, big time um, SVP supporter, uh, organized a bunch of attendees and, and got Amy a, a birthday present. And it was just really, really fantastic energy and just such an amazing community. And I mean, it's, it's really easy to love um, this audience, but never more so than this last week. It was interesting meeting like all these people face to face. Um, I mean, most of the names, you know, we know from, you know, being within the, being in the community and then to like, you know, meet them in person. Like some people I recognize from their photos and like, I recognize them. Other people I, I didn't. Um, it was just awesome to meet all these people in person. It was like a completely sort of surreal thing to, to see this community that is, that is really grown around us. I mean, they all have, you know, different community. I'm not saying it's all on us or anything, but it, it's kind of, you know, it, it is one of those things. If we had never done SVP, this group together as one thing would not exist. And it, it's really cool to see that it's uh, it's, it's humbling and it actually makes, you know, this all feel worth something. <laughs> Sorry to get so deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. Jamie Crumpton we'll, we'll, said Dave's making me cry. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get we'll get deep into the show. That was it. it really was just phenomenal. Um, my something cool is in the uh, fast paced way that things change all the time around here. I never really know kind of what we've talked about and what we haven't. Um, but I don't think I've officially officially said that you know that. Sterling and Stone is about to get a lot more awesome in terms of in in person stuff that I am uh, that I'm going to be down there in two weeks, which is kind of fucked up, kind of cool. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we uh, Johnny Johnny found his place um, the day of the day this all started. Um, we were having a, a like a volunteer night where people just showed up before the the summit started on a Wednesday, so Tuesday night. Which, dude, can you believe that was only like 10 days ago? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like months ago? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like 10 days ago. It, it feels forever ago. Actually, um, Sean and I uh, went to see our friend John Morrow on Tuesday when I flew in. And by Sunday, we were talking to Andre, who was there too. And he said something about it. I was like, was that? That wasn't like three months ago that we saw John. <laughs> yeah, it felt like forever ago. But on the way to the to volunteer night, um, we met Johnny's realtor at the place that he's going to rent, and um, just everything happened really fast and you know right on time. So really, really awesome. So that's going to be crazy being down there. But I, I do guarantee that uh, that we're going to get a lot more stuff. Saying that we're going to get stuff done isn't right, but we're going to. Uh, the company is going to get bigger and better, and and two, like we we kind of glossed over that, but like I I think we're going to have Dave down here pretty soon. I think that's going to happen. And- yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that this show because um, I, I think we all have our favorite Dave moments from the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a story I'm going to tell on our show ever about that. Uh, but um, uh, do I need to get a certain photograph prepared for the show? <laughs> that sounds very creepy. <laughs> it does. I knew someone put cameras in that room. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a photograph of a bloody blanket. <laughs> oh, that's for worst show ever. Save that for worst show ever. No, but I should. Got to stay kind of on relevance, relevance today. Up in there. Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so uh, where do we even start this? I think the the premise is uh, yes, we had a great um, summit. Um, I think it exceeded all expectations. And you know, it's about our- community for me, community and and further learning and th- that sort of thing. Like it, I think we all got better. Basically, everybody who went. Yeah, I want to decompress about it, but it, it's really how is it relevant to the person listening who who didn't go, right? And I oh, think you know what that person who didn't go should do? I think they should go ahead and sign up for 2017. <laughs> all right, you take it away, gonna, Johnny. I thought he was going to say they should kill themselves. <laughs> no, they shouldn't kill themselves. <laughs> But we wow. did in, in the spirit of wow, they should kill themselves of all the things you could say. That's where you were going. We did. We did go ahead and put a, a page up already, though, because I know that there was a lot of like, "Are you going to do this again next year? Are you going to do this again?" And and oh, I want to go next year. So um, we already put up a page for 2017. There's no speakers. There's no location. There's no, no dates. <laughs> none, none of that. But um, if you're so sure that you're going, I mean, it'll be about the same time, right? Like it'll be approximately the same time, March or April, and. Um, 
it's it's just at smarterartistsummit.com again smarter artist summit. yeah it'll be spring of 2017 for sure and um we also kind of know um it's going to be um in austin texas for sure right um Although Dave wants it in redacted next time, but but no, well, no, um, no, I don't. Not any. Oh, he, oh, and now he changed his mind. He doesn't even want it in redacted. I, I don't um, want people to share the shame that is my. It would be soiled by being in redacted. It, it really would be. It would be the worst. We'd have like four people there, all of them crying, <laughs> banjos playing, songs, sadly in the background. Um. So yeah, it'll be in Austin, Texas, in spring, and I imagine it will also be in a VUCA facility. So probably not that one. Um, because we want more than two bathrooms, <laughs> <laughs> which was the only that really like the only complaint anyone had was uh, was that there were only two bathrooms. Although this morning, did you guys see on the the Facebook page that has changed into a a potential benefit because that I got to talk to people in line. <laughs> No, no, fuck that. That is not a benefit. No, oh, wait, did did stand up at the end and and thank the audience for not pissing on the seat. Which yes, is, that is the true miracle of the week, and uh, that 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 many people in a in a room and nobody pissed on the toilet seat, or they cleaned it up. Whatever the case, it's amazing. I, I've never seen that sort of constraint in a restroom, uh, a restraint in a restroom that that men have used. Usually, it's like a fire hose. Usually, uh, it, it yeah. Usually, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting. In, in yeah, the Dave was expecting upper deckers, and there were none, and he didn't know what to think. Um, Kate Morgan asked, don't you guys usually have two conferences a year? Um, no, one, one, one conference, one sizable conference. We have two, um, closed door masterminds, but uh, like a big giant to do like that. Um, first of all, Amy would cry or quit if we did two a year. Um, so, and we love her and need her. (laughs) So I think, I think one a year is about all we could manage. Uh, all right. Well, there is a, a lull when, and you know what, when, when there's a lull, the it, just over. Me, it just reminds me of a, of, of a great book cover when there's a lull <laughs> and then I get sad because then it's like, I'm going to go back to redacted and I'm not going to be, you know, where there are no good covers, where there's a, just a general lack of good book covers and redacted. I mean, Dave, what do you do when you cross the state line? You must've been like, I'm never going to get one, a good cover again. Florida is a barren wasteland for book covers. Uh, if you live in Florida, you're fucked. At least, at least, well, f- for many reasons. Uh, and if you live in some other states, you're also fucked for book covers. But fortunately, fortunately, uh, in the 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 new world that is the internet, we have 99designs.com slash SPP. I don't and know about this. Designers that are not restricted by regions and by backwards thinking of various states and people. Uh, these these are forward thinking creatives that may or may not be using ayahuasca that that can that can tap in to the realm of consciousness and cre- how often that sneaks in there. By the way, do you notice that everybody on anything ayahuasca related, we now get tagged on everything? <laughs> I have noticed that. And and the, these are truly creative book covers that will that will they'll make you forget where you live It'll, if you live in florida you don't have to suffer you can you can have a great book <laughs> well, cover. you do have to suffer well yes you do have to suffer but you, your book covers don't have to suffer you you can stand with the best sellers on all of the platforms and and have success because you have a cover that isn't designed in florida So, I mean, that alone should sell you on 99 Designs. So start your custom book cover design today at 99designs.com slash SPP. If you use that link, you get the free power pack upgrade and they don't force you to stay in Florida. So 99designs.com slash SPP. Rachel Duncan says Dave is the official spokesperson for the Visit Florida board. I feel like every single 99 designs ad is going to be the last one. I mean, I know that's a running joke, but I've actually felt it lately. I feel like it should be a spin-off, its own podcast perhaps, where we just we okay, we okay, here's a pro- Oh, whoa, 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 this is a good idea. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. E- email me or maybe in the comments maybe. I don't know where. Uh-oh, I think genius is about to explode. Genius. Okay. Austin Dave's coming back. Okay. <laughs> in the comments or email me or whatever try to find something like that 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 seems like it should not be an ad raid 
<laughs> and and like something like ayahuasca, just something like really crazy that there's no way they could put that in an ad. Not racist, homophobic, or any of those horrible things, <laughs> but something that we a challenge for us to to work it into an ad and make sense of it all. I, I think that'll make it fun. Have you noticed a change in Dave? I think it's persisted. It's been about yeah. a week and it's still there. <laughs> No, it is. It's like I've heard that happens when you take ayahuasca. <laughs> that it's, there's there's a nice half life that sticks for a while. I think um, going to Austin was like ayahuasca for Dave. Uh, Kate says, "I love it when Dave goes all gleeful, evil genius at work." Um, yeah, and Boyd Craven says, "Is this the real Dave?" And yeah, you met actually, the real Dave, Boyd. You got the real Dave. Yeah, this this is the real Dave. Um, I don't think he's on ayahuasca now, but I do no. think um, that that the Dave 2.0 um, might be sticking around for a while. Uh, so should we just dig right into this? Because yeah, let's dig right into this. I, I think we want to give the people what they want, and I think what they want is a lot of Dave stories. Oh my Agreed. god. <laughs> this will be like the lowest rated podcast. <laughs> well, no, well, um, I think we want to save Dave stories for the other podcast. We want to yeah. have some farce of relevance here. Yes. Oh, a farce of relevance. Okay. So, um, uh, I, I can, I can talk about, you know, uh, my, uh, epiphany, but maybe later, maybe that's too, too big for starting out the show. Yeah, why you know, start with topical things like yeah. this? Well, no, no, no. Relevant. I actually, I, you know where I think we should start on this because it is a big deal because it was hard to get Dave there. So, as recently as it was Thursday, so hard to get Dave there. Y- yes. As recently as Thursday, um, before the show or before the summit. So I guess six days before, well, no Tuesday. Um, Dave was still trying to talk his way out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was still, are you sure I should come? I don't, I'm not really, I, I don't, I don't know about this. There's floods all along the way. Um, this is a mistake. Um, I'm going to have to rent a pickup truck. Yeah, he did. He rented a big pickup truck. Um, and, and just for the record, Dave, I picked up Johnny at the airport and he had flown in on a transfer from Florida. So he left Florida two hours before I picked him up and Dave left three days. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, and this is um, not no joke. It was actually more expensive to get Dave from Florida <laughs> to Texas and back than it was to get all of my furniture and belongings <laughs> from California to Ohio. <laughs> professionally packed and moved. Well, I was professionally packed and moved. <laughs> so just that's all to say that he so did not want to go. Um, and yet I think possibly he might have actually enjoyed it the most. So um, Dave, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Because I, th- I think that's, that was kind of extraordinary. I think all of us there really enjoyed watching that transformation. Uh, I, I it's one it's one of those things where <clears throat> it's it's easy. And, and I talked a little. I did a, a walking day, which is recorded for next week, and I talked a little bit about this. and And I wasn't sure, you know, how to really talk about it. Um, the summit, Smart Artist Summit. Um, for me, the the events have always been sort of you know it's it's people it's other people i don't want to be there uh and i I didn't really see the value of it and as a writer i am isolated i'm isolated you know in general but i'm also isolated from other creatives and other energy like the most fun i have is on this podcast and the next one and Which he <laughs> spends half the time bitching. Right, I was just going to say, do you remember well, like, that, that's just, that happened to be on the podcast? I, I, I just bitch because, you know, I'd rather be sleeping. But once I'm awake, I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Can we get that as a tagline to promotional <laughs> copy? Once I'm awake, I enjoy it. That's also how he feels about sex. <laughs> and life in general. Um, and... Like, I also enjoy, like, brainstorming. So the things I enjoy most in in the creative sphere is when I'm around other people in a creative way and having, you know, the the listeners of the podcast for so long, uh, it, it, I knew there was a community around us, but it it didn't feel real. It it felt like one of those, okay, here's me and there is everybody else. I, I didn't feel like part of it in, in a way. I don't know if this makes sense, 
but actually being around the other people and just seeing how how like so many people were were helpful to one another it, it see uh, see one of the things about community that's always bothered me and this is really true of like some of the dark parts of keyboards and other stuff like that it, it all turns to people bitching about other people it, it it it's mostly talking about other people and not ideas and i i hate that i hate that so much. I, I it's a small mindedness i don't like it in my real life when people get together and all they do is fucking gossip about other people i'm checking out i'm mentally out the door and that's kind of how I feel about creative communities in general. There's so much sniping and jealousy and pettiness and bitterness. And I, I don't like it. I don't like being a part of it. But this was the opposite of that. This was like it was a room with people that weren't like that. They, they were kind to one another. They were sharing. I mean, they all got together and got Amy a gift for her birthday. I mean, that, that was fucking awesome. And they didn't have to do it. And we, we've got a great community around us. And that really opened my eyes to. The fact that I'm not, you know, I'm not alone. I mean, I knew I wasn't alone, but I, I felt it. There's a difference between knowing and feeling. And I, I don't know. It, it really it helped me. It helped me forward. Yeah, there's no way to, um, I don't know, to, to really understand how that community felt. Um, I mean, someone could have told me ahead of time and just feeling it is, is so different. One of my favorite stories was when, um, before Julia spoke, Right, and, and I just think that this, this, I don't know, it says so much about the event in its totality. But so Julia Kent was one of our speakers and um, you know, she was, one thing that we did that, that I think was, was really great was to not have a stage. So we didn't do it in a hotel um, and, and that was by design. We wanted to have it in a place that just felt more intimate and there's something very cold about a hotel. And we even had to shuttle, like everybody stayed at a hotel and then they had to get in a shuttle to go to another place. Um, you know, which, which like the bathrooms, there was a very invisible benefit there because people had to talk to each other. They're in the, sh the shuttles, they're waiting for the shuttle, they're taking the shuttle over. And so there was just a lot of, um, a, a lot of talking and we didn't have a, even though it wasn't in a hotel, we also didn't have a stage, uh, which I wasn't was sure about. Um, I, <clears throat> It worked super well. The the idea of not having a stage and the idea of the informal presentation style, but it worked great. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I I I didn't know for sure that it would work, but it really felt like it would work. You know, not not setting the presenters up on a hierarchy. Like I didn't want to be on a stage and feel like there's us and them. Like it, I really wanted it to feel equal and just level and like we're all in this together. And I think that that's promoting community, right? That we're, we're, we're doing this, we're all on the same exact level. And so even though some of us have more experience or you know we've done more, everybody in there wants to do a lot and everybody in there is doing the work. And so there shouldn't be any kind of hierarchy. And so uh, you know, the four of us are up there, it, me, Dave and Johnny, and then, and then Julia, and we're all sitting on our stools and we're getting ready. And we just had a break and there's a little bit of you know, commotion in the room. And, and Julia leans over and she whispers to me, I just made the USA today. I'm so excited. And I said, well, that's awesome. You should open with that. That's a great opening because, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about success and she's, she's aghast. She says, no, no, I, you can't open with that at a writer's conference, you know? And I said, oh, no, you totally can. You should. She said, no, people, it'll sound like bragging. People will be jealous. I don't want to do that. And I said, not in this room, you know, in, in this room, that's going to go over really well. People will be happy for you. And she was very uncertain. Um, and I said, just trust me, just trust the room. And so she opened with, well, I just made USA Today. And the room erupted in applause. Like everybody was so happy for her. And you could just see on her face how surprised she was. And we talked about it later that, you know, it's just she's never been to a conference like that because writers don't really celebrate each other like that, even when they pretend to. And within our community, we we did like there was so much mutual celebration that we're all in this together. We are all trying to do something monumental. And there was just I, I, another comment that I heard over and over and over is now I feel like. I'm home and I have to go back to my regular life. You know, I have to go back to my, Ooh. you know, the <laughs> right. That these are because everybody there had, you know, intersecting goals and interests. Um, you know, people could talk about what they want to do and what they are doing 
publishing, but also their ambitions and not have people stare at them like they're crazy. Um, I, I think there was a real feeling of belonging uh, among the community. Um, Missy Morgan says, it's strange to imagine Dave not feeling, uh, feeling in quotes, a part of the community when it seems like you are the center of it to me anyway. The other guys don't do social media much, whereas you do. Uh, don't think you realize how much we all love your tweets, Facebook messages, and we wait for them to laugh and smile. Um, it, it, it is one, it, it, it's, it's me. Like I, it's kind of how I, I feel, I feel isolated in general from other people. And while I do realize that, you know, a lot of people do like us in the show and, and like me, it's, it's, it, it was made more real just seeing the people like putting uh, faces to names and stuff that I, I don't know. Part of it was seeing people, but also another part of it was how everybody interacted together. There, there wasn't that that negativity that uh, I, you know, what loathe. And to me, that that was just like something magical, really. Like all these people, like Sean said, uh, like celebrating other people's success, and like all these stories I heard um, from other people that came up to me and stuff, and the success they've had. And I didn't see any of that, like just people jealous of the success and sniping. People are trying to help one another. I didn't see, I didn't see any jealousy, not even a bunch of it. No wannabe. Yeah, we had somebody come from another group that Sean and I are part of, and she said, um, "I was really surprised. Like there were no." She said, "I didn't see any wannabes," which basically meant that people were doing the work. And what I mean, I've I used to go to I went to a few writers conferences before I started all this. I mean, years and years ago, I was in my 20s and there were a lot of people who were very enamored of the idea of being a writer. And then very few of them had actually done any writing. (laughs) This was a room full of of doers and everybody had some sort of story, like even if they really hadn't done a lot of writing, they were doing the research or they were assembling their machine or they were figuring stuff out and the number of people in the audience who who wowed me uh, was was really cool, too, because it would be easy in a situation like this to say that we're the the I'll put it in quotes. We're the authorities on. No way. There were people there who put us to shame to put us to shame. Right. And so I was just as interested in learning from all the other people, not not just like the speakers, but the attendees um, who were doing amazing things. And so this is a really a very special community. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I felt <laughs> I felt inspired, and and it wasn't just the speakers. You know, the the speakers were great. I mean, for sure, um, and I think all of them really put everything they had into into their delivery. But for me, it was the community as much, if not more, than the speakers. And you know, how many people came up to us and said, <laughs> "This is what I'm doing," and. You know, I mean, I'll call out Lori Starkey <laughs> because, oh my God, um, she's just right. crazy. She wrote like 50 books last year and that's just nuts. Um, you know, there's just so many people just doing the work. And, you know, I mean, if you can make Johnny look slow, high five, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and <laughs> Lori does. Lori outrights um, all of us put together, I think. Uh, which is which is just kind of magnificent, um, but but it, to me that was um, I, I had a big emotional change last week that I, I really didn't see coming, and you know I was really really excited about the event and I was really pleased with the event and it, it really did exceed our expectations and that's all wonderful but it didn't I didn't expect it to even in a best case scenario I didn't expect it to change the way I think and and it did. So what I mean by that is the smarter artist is something I'm very proud of. Um, I'm proud of this podcast. Um, I'm proud of the smarter artist. He means the nonfiction stuff we do. Right, right. So this podcast, write, publish, repeat, uh, fiction unboxed for sure. Uh, The event, the stone table, all of it. Um, uh, You know, all of the indie publishing uh, things that we're involved in. Uh, But it's always kind of been um, like a a cousin to what I really want to do. Right. And, And, We've, You've actually we've talked, kind of turned away from the cousin, yeah, right? So it's been like I don't know the the I don't know the the the, the most annoying sibling, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It's just it's not that I don't care. It's just that I've I've almost worn it like a badge and kind of expected. Well, we've never wanted to be the guys who talked about who we don't want to be the guys who make money talking about writing 
rather than actually doing the writing because you see a lot of that. You see like people who, too much of it, right? Too, too right, much right, of it, right? Exactly, and like disproportionate. Like there, there are plenty of people out there who will, will talk a lot about writing and make a lot of money on it, and they they've never really made any money on on writing. And that's what Sean's talking about here. We we've gone way too far to one end because we don't want to be painted with that brush. Yeah, exactly. And it's just you, you know we we wave it like a flag. We're we're not revenue first. We're fiction first. We we uh, we tell the stories we want to tell. We do it all our way, <laughs> right? And it's uh, it's not that I don't care about the smart artists. It's just that I've been I don't know almost religious about putting fiction first, and. Um, and and feeling almost like I don't know, just validated, almost righteous, you know, about it. Mm-hmm. And and I don't feel that way anymore. Um, the summit really changed that. The number of people who um, whose lives I, I now know that we've changed, and it's yeah. Different. We hear that all the time. People are like, "Oh, thank you. You 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 opened my eyes to this, or you you changed my view of writing." But like we got such a concentration of it that it's like, okay, I'm not willing to just dismiss that anymore. Maybe, maybe this actually is making a difference. Right. Uh, looking, looking in someone's eyes and having them tell you that it's, it's just a different thing. Um, you know, having people fly from all over the world um, to, to be a part of it. It's just, it's different. I can't, I can't put it back in the box now. I, I know what a difference we've made. Um, you know, and I had a really nice moment with, with Amy actually, uh, on, I guess it was Sunday night, we were all saying goodbye. And <laughs> it was the three of us and Amy, <clears throat> excuse me, were eating um, at, at Jack Allen's, which Dave officially says is better than Johnny Carino's, which is one of my... And it was just, a real like, like Deshaun's like, okay, this or Johnny Carino's? And Dave's like, oh, this. Like, Jack yeah, Allen's. that, that was like, there was no hesitation. Burgers, so they win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Telling the waiter that like he's from Florida, but no, he's moving here. Yeah. So I, I definitely, uh, <laughs> that was definitely a, a, a moment. <clears throat> But after that, you know, um, Dave and Johnny um, went, got in Dave's truck to go back to their love shack, and I was, <laughs> I was shack, out there, I, I, I was out there with Amy, and I was talking a little bit about this and how I was feeling about the smart artist, and I just said I, I never, I never wanted to give it the attention that it deserves until we made, you know, millions of dollars in fiction and had the authority, and and she said, well, you you, you have made billions of dollars in fiction. You just haven't kept it. And that is very true. The, the amount of people who are at the summit saying, you know, I quit my job um, because I read Write, Publish, Repeat, and I'm now doing this full time. I'm making this amount of money, you know, over and over and over and over. We heard that. And if you add that all up, there's just so many millions of dollars of creative um, work that is now in the economy. And that's at least in small part to the work that we do and the community that we have built around this and all of you guys listening and, and the work that you do to thread it all together. And it's just, you know, amazing. Like Jamie Crumpton right now, I had no idea a life of prosperity as a writer was possible until you guys. And that's just, I don't know. I, I was never really willing to own that until this last week. And now I'm inspired by it. Wow. We're really awesome. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> There is that, there there is that sort of thing. Like I, I feel like I don't want to grab the mantle because I see so many people that, you know, are just fucking fakers and posers, and I'm not going to name anybody. But I think you should right now. <laughs> and, and I I don't want uh, that sort of like I I don't want to be. I don't want to be grouped with those people that uh, that aren't really helping, uh, that are probably harming people, really, in a way. And and that is one of those things that I've always been reluctant to do. And, you know, just meeting all these people, though, in person, uh, our community, and seeing that, you know, they're doing well. And they've they've actually gotten stuff from us, and not just us, but the other people in the community. It, it it isn't about us. It's about all the other people in the community that they're so open and sharing, and it, it's just so it's so opposite of everything I've seen. It makes me yeah, question we're half my of one negativity. Percent. Yeah, we're half of one percent of this. It's it's it, really. I, I mean, I I'm an articulate man, and I really don't know how to articulate this. Just I'm kind of pissed. Of, I'm kind of pissed. People have. Given me faith in other humans, and it's a <laughs> place to be. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm scared for you. Um, it, it really was amazing to see the the shift in. I mean, for me, it was. Um, I, I think it was a really necessary shift because there's there's a lot of stuff that we can do with the smarter artists that we just haven't. Um, you know, like iterate and optimize is a good example. It, you know, it took us a long time to write that book, um, and you know, it, it just it wasn't as important as getting the next invasion book out or getting Karma Police done. And um, and and I think that what we saw is. I don't know that that it's not just that there's a a fan base for what we do here. It's that that work is really meaningful and um, and it's it's driving people in a way that the entertainment is not. And I, I get so much joy out of being an entertainer and you know making up our stories and and all of that. But uh, but I don't know. There's something very there's more depth to all of this work. I guess okay. uh, this. Go ahead. Uh, this throne rever of um, asked, "What is a poser to you?" And I, I'm a bit more cynical than than most people when it comes to that. Um, basically, it, it's somebody that's that's being a predator. They're 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 claiming a success that they've never had. They're packaging up other people's ideas and selling them it it insanely everything we've at a premium. Yeah, yeah. Everything we've we we've done we've given away a lot on this show. The past few years we've given a lot. And we've I've seen the same stuff that we've given away for free, packaged up and sold. And they some of these people, I'm pretty sure, got it from us. And it's cynical. It's it's a cynical, negative sort of thing, and they're really they're. I don't know. To me, they're they're ripping people off. They're they're just they're just fucking assholes. And I'd love to name names, but I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> uh, it, but I've always I've always hated hated that that part of the community. And th- some of them are even you know they're they're celebrated as being these kind people that aren't really kind. I know I know how they really are. And they're cynical fucking liars. And I'll take it one step further. You guys notice this veneer of it's it's almost classic Dave. (laughs) Now it's got this kindler, gentler veneer on it. Um, Yeah, I I will. uh, I'll I'll take that one step further and say uh, people who sell hope. um, That that, that's it right there. And 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 that's you. You can't you can't do that. You can't sell somebody a dream. You can sell them practical experience. You can sell them strategy. You can't sell them. Um, pie in the sky and and you do you do see that you um i i understand the term you know you, you sell the sizzle not the steak but you can't just sell the sizzle and no steak and 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 i have seen that done and it is unfortunate but just to bring this back home i, I think that the, the big takeaway here is that i i think the three of us um always love the podcast we always love this work but i think that as um as a trio and as a company we are just doubly committed now to this brand and to um to this work and to making the smart artist um as amazing as it can possibly be well i would say to bring this home that the ultimate value of the summit for for me and i think for a lot of people is the idea of not just getting together with people in person but getting together with like-minded uh authors so basically some of the things that we said before and then i've seen over in the comments are basically that this is it's kind of a unique group like it's this is a group that um, is uh, possibility-minded, prosperity-minded writers who don't um, tear each other down, who applaud each other's accomplishments, like all that good stuff. And I would just say that um, if you weren't at the summit, if you can't get to a summit, um, you want to find some of those people. Find someone in your area anyway. That makes such a difference, just being around people who are like that. And you, you subtly boost each other and... And that it just makes such a difference over it, if you're in a snipey group, like get the hell out of that. Um, it just, I don't know. Yeah. So, so Rachel junk Duncan asks, and, and this is very related. Do you think in the future you might be interested in having a way for people to remotely view the summit? I think a lot of people who can't attend physically would be eager to watch at home pay wallet. Well, I don't know. It's, it's way too far to, to think about that for next year, but, but I think it would lose so much. Um, because you know the speakers were great again, but it, it, it was about so much more than that. It, you know, it was about being able to dart up to the uh, 
to the introverts area, if you were feeling overwhelmed, it was about talking to people in the shuttle on the way over. Um, it was about breaking for lunch and walking a mile to Torchy's Tacos and, <clears throat> you know, talking to a large cluster of people. Uh, th there was just so much community. And I don't think you could ever <clears throat> get the community by <clears throat> opening a paywall. And I think it might even kind of diminish the experience. Um, there you go. Dylan Perry asks, uh, do you think going to a summit would be as valuable for someone who hasn't published yet? I, <clears throat> no, I don't. Um, I, I think that there is value there, but as valuable, no, I, I think that you would get some motivation for sure. I, I think a hundred percent of the people left with a feeling of I'm motivated now. I, I want to, I want to do stuff now, but uh, I think that if you already have a book or a few books, you're just going to get so much more out of an event like that. Now, do you, do you think there's any value like in networking with other people um, as far as maybe getting a little bit faster, uh, better? I, I don't know. It, it's one of those, like, I, like, I feel weird uh, saying, you know, come to this thing, uh, if, if you're not, I don't, I don't want people, if they're not ready to come to come to it, I don't want people to, we're not selling hope and I don't want people's money just to get them in the door. Uh, I want, I want people to actually benefit from being in it. And if, if you can't benefit, but you know, I, I think to, to me, I mean, I think there was a value to me going to this thing, just, you know, being around all of these other people. It's weird. I, I, I so don't want to be one of those motherfuckers selling hope. But wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I've got to interrupt you because MG on says, Dave cannot sell hope. He would get sued. <laughs> <laughs> False advertising. Uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. So, so I, I, I do think that, and we've talked about this before, but you, you need to find your people. You need to find your tribe. And and that might not be, um, you know, coming to Austin, Texas, but I bet you there's three people, you know, in proximity to you where you could connect, you could bond, you could um, you not feel alone. Because I will I think say that the, the Facebook group, I think, is like great for that distance i mean again that's a group of people who went to the summit but that is a really active group of like-minded people there are thousands of posts in that thing i i can't keep up it's kind of amazing and um i think what did it explode about a, a week before the summit something and like then, that and then just ever since and um, it didn't explode with like i'm excited to go to the summit it exploded with like in the trenches publishing stuff. It was like, Hey, what do you think of this cover? Or, Hey, I'm considering doing this with my series. And, and then, you know, everybody uh, hopped in. It was, it was a great collaborative environment. Yeah. Jamie says that group was worth the money I paid for the summit. Um, I I've, I've heard that a lot. Um, yeah. Because that's it. Everybody wants community, you know, and this is kind of interesting too. You hear about, uh, you know, like uh, products, right? Like someone builds a course, Right. And you can never sell a community as part of a course. Right. That's not what people pay for. And yet more often than not, the course element to or the community element to the course is what people stick around for and where they find the most value. And you can find that offline. You can find that anywhere. You know, you can find it in, in certain Facebook groups or, or whatever. But I, I think it's important to know that you shouldn't try to go without it. You shouldn't try to just go it alone. You know, uh, and Dave, you know, it really was amazing to see him happy and inspired and talking to people and chatty. Like Dave was chatty. It was weird. <laughs> and it was just that it was because he got out of his head, out of his space and in, into something else. And I think every artist can benefit from that because you can only operate so long in isolation. Um, Scott Moon asks, will there be an introvert room loft next year? Um I uh, it will I don't know. Probably be something. It just won't. It probably won't be in the same venue, so it's hard to say. Right. I don't know. I don't know where we will be, but I can't imagine we won't have a space. I thought that was so effective, and people seem to appreciate it so much. Um, just the ability to go up there and recharge for. Uh, just to set the stage here, um, for those of you who weren't there, there was a a little second floor. Um, you know, area and we could have made it like a VIP area or, you know, a, a speaker's lounge or something. But instead we made it an introverts area where anybody could go and just kind of unplug and, and sit for the a few minutes. The rule was you weren't allowed to talk. 
you all. just couldn't talk, right? Otherwise, and, I would have done the show from there. <laughs> he would have. Um, and so I, I think people really seem to love that idea and appreciate it. And so there's, um, I can't imagine not having some introvert area, but I don't know that it will be like that exactly because I don't know where we will be. A lot of this is so, so, so preliminary. It's so preliminary that it's, I hesitate to even discuss it. But um, I mean, you know, we have a year to plan this again. And uh, who knows what can happen in a year. I, I think it'll be a little bigger. I, we actually had a few people say, please don't let it get any bigger. Well, I mean, it either has to get a little bigger or we have to charge a little bit more because we didn't, uh, you know, I think we lost money on this. I, I don't know exactly. We haven't gotten all the numbers in yet. But I'd be shocked if we didn't lose a little. We Our goal was to break even, and I, I don't think we quite did that. But I still feel like we really won. I feel like the community is is stronger and smarter and just more bonded than ever before. And And even if we lost a little money, it was totally, totally worth it. Right. So that's, that's fine. But, um, you know, probably it, it'll, it'll definitely be either a little bigger or, um, I mean, it's not more expensive right now, but maybe closer to the day once everybody, all you guys have, have joined who want to, maybe it'll go up. I don't know. Um, but it, it, we don't know, like there's a bunch of low hanging fruit that I know that we can, um, we, we can, but like, we know some things that we want to, um, optimize a little bit. Um, you guys wouldn't necessarily care about this, but like the hotel situation was stupid. Um, from our oh end. my god, we ended up we ended up paying five thousand dollars for hotel rooms that just sat empty, which was great. Love paying for that. Um, but I mean, just uh, the event itself. Room room. We should have. We should have just gone and slept in every bed. Uh, I actually, I actually kind of wanted to do that. Um, we, we we never did it, but I thought you know. Three weeks before the event, you just go in and say, "Okay, I'll take all the rooms because we have to pay for them anyway." And you know they want they want incidental. You know they're you know they're selling them to other people and shit. Right, Not right, really right. And they don't actually want them empty because they want those incidental charges. So I just wanted to rent them all. <laughs> Figure, like, no, I'm taking all of them. I want I want every room. Um, but we we never did it. We had too much other stuff to do. But yeah, I think the, the hotel bill is like fifty five hundred dollars on unused rooms, and that was Which that was great to pay for abs- literally nothing. I mean, literally. yeah, it, it was literally nothing. So, it, and, but but that was us trying to make sure that everyone was taken care of. You know, we didn't we didn't know how many to secure, and so we secured you know enough to make sure everybody had them. But I think the the I mean, this gets into the weeds, but. It's stuff you don't know, right? You have to iterate. We'll do better next year. But we didn't know that people would stay as long as they did. And so they stayed for a longer stretch. So because the Wyndham was out of rooms, uh, either at the earlier days or the later days of the length that they wanted to stay, then they would just book all the rooms elsewhere. Because But it's shocking elsewhere. how well, considering that we've never done this before, it's shocking how well it went off. And we don't take any credit for that. I mean, we'll take credit oh, for being the focal Amy. point. Yeah. But it was, this was, this was Amy and um, several people, the, the, the sound guy, Randall, who was awesome. Like, I want to work with him again. And the people at Buka said, I can't believe this is your first event, which is a huge compliment to, to Amy because we basically said, hey, do you want to put on an event? She said, well, I don't know how to do that. And we said, well, we're sure you'll figure it out. So the <laughs> fact that so much of it came together. That is oh, literally God. how the conversation went. Yeah, it is, is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, there's, there's two things there. Amy did an amazing job, and the community did an amazing job supporting Amy. Lots of volunteers. Um, she got lots so many birthday help. presents. Yeah, the, the legend of Ben Hale. I mean, that guy just wanted to help. Uh, you, you know, I think there was, there was – everybody wanted to see this happen. Everybody wanted to see it be a success. And so, I mean, we could take responsibility for – I don't know, conjuring the, the idea and the focal point, That's, helping to draw the crowd, do any of the work, but, but yeah, we, we, we really didn't. Um, and, and I think that, I don't know, I'm just, I'm so in love with our tribe. I'm so in love with our people and I feel very grateful for, um, I just feel very great. I feel very grateful for you guys. Um, meaning Johnny and Dave, I feel very grateful for Amy and our entire team. Um, I feel grateful for everybody who, you know, paid money and either drove or flew, you know, to, to spend a few days with us. It was just out of the country even. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was Alan and Jan are the two that I can think of who, who came from really far. And then of course, Nick and Joanna came from the UK. Um, Yeah. Just came from, from what Gibraltar or something. Gibraltar. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> we're all over the place. And I don't know. We're just we're 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 really yeah. But really I came from Florida. You did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, no one no one spent longer. <laughs> that's for sure people may have traveled farther but nobody spent longer to get there um and it was just really Yay, cool Dave. to see the, the whole team in one place you know from from garrett and, and Amy. i mean the only one missing really was was maya right we even had um yeah audra uh, was even there jason there but audra was there yeah we missed you maya um yeah it was it was i don't know it was unforgettable and it was the first so I, you know, I, I already can't wait for the next one, but uh, I, I'm just, I feel so driven to do so much more for this community. That was something that James, so James from Podium was commenting on our tribe and he just said, it's so filled with givers. And that's very true. We have so many givers in our community and that just makes me want to give back. It makes me want to do more. And I've, I've for a couple of years now, I've kind of shied away from the smart artist and now i just want to dive in do you see that I james will. on facebook shared a picture of himself in front of the i love you so much wall sean <laughs> bring back memories yeah i was it, blown it did. away by, by how nice james was like I, I we talked on the phone you know and we we've emailed but i never realized like just how awesome of a guy he was like he, he's you know he's more professional in the email but when you get to know him just awesome He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's one of the he's one of my favorite people in the world. Love that guy. One he's so um, he's so gentle and just soft spoken and just super super smart. Um, and it's it's wonderful to hear him talk. Uh, Andre too. Andre is just so quiet, and then when he opens his mouth, it's like <laughs> it's just really really smart. I love I love I love smart people and. Um, I don't know that I've ever been in, um, had so many smart people all doing the work around me in such a, a short period of time. It was just extraordinary. I've never been around that many smart people ever in my entire life, but that's easy to say in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you may argue that there aren't that many smart people in Florida. <laughs> 150? Oh, you'd be cutting it really close, man. <laughs> there, there, it, 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 in, the, in Florida's defense, there might be a lot of people here, which I just have not met them because we're all isolated by all the other fuckers here. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so th here's a shout out for JB. Yeah, so, so JB, who I guess you would have met on last week's SVP episode. Um, now, he's not self-publishing a book <laughs> um, at all. He... He literally came down because he thought it would be fun to be around that many creative people <laughs> and because he knew we had a whole bunch of unused hotel rooms and he was trying to just swallow up <laughs> swallow up he, a few rooms on the block. Every one of them. <laughs> that dude's yeah. life is a party. Yeah, he, he literally flew from um, from Florida. Well, maybe he just needed to get out of Florida like Dave. That's true. <laughs> but he, he flew from I'll Florida. i go with him next time. He flew from Florida to Austin um, just to, you know, take up hotels for three days and have fun. So was there any practical value in this podcast or just like <laughs> glad handing each other? No, we're, <laughs> this is just, <laughs> hey, aren't we jerk. awesome? <laughs> right. No, it was a circle jerk. Um, but I do think that, that our community is more bonded than ever. And I think that the three of us are more bonded than ever. And I think that we're all really committed to doing amazing things for our people sort of it's sort of see what happens next because um you guys couldn't have done anything more to give us a, a shot in the arm to give more back i guess is a good way to look at that like we're um we're more motivated than ever to to put more awesomeness out into this community i guess so thank yeah. you we've, we've been shy about the nonfiction um because it's always seemed like the easy button for us and now it doesn't feel like an easy button. It feels necessary. It feels like that's what you guys want and we should give it more attention. And well, I, Rachel Duncan uh, had a comment. Episode 206, have a tribe, love your tribe. I think that's our show title. Oh, I, I like that. Thank you, Rachel. Um, you know, and, and, and it's true. Like it was wonderful. One of my favorite moments and I was meeting Shannon Morgan. I was who, just going to say that. Yeah, sh sh Shannon Morgan is... The wonderful, wonderful, just she gave us the title, right? Publish Repeat, which has become such a part of who we are and what we stand for in our brand. And we crowdsource that title. <laughs> and 
like it was just great to give her a hug and say thank you in person. And you know, here's Rachel naming this, you know, circle jerk episode for us and making it sound better than it is. So thank you, Rachel. And, and I want to say, like, that there were a lot of nonfiction people there uh, this the, the past week or so, and like the ones that I met, they were all like, you know, they were writing like the sort of nonfiction that I actually like. It wasn't that cheap, you know, just try and make a quick buck on, on Kindle sort of stuff. It was people actually making a difference in the world. And God, I feel so, <laughs> I'm too happy. I don't like wow. this. <laughs> this is very dangerous. Yeah, this is, de- if we're all happy on this show, this kills the show. So I, I gotta, I gotta steep myself in more Florida uh, for the next, next week's episode. <laughs> I tried dropping a link into Spice Up the Blab and it didn't work. So uh, forget yeah. about bl- spicing up the blab. All right. So um, I, I, I guess, I guess we'll stop. I'll just remind you that if you're really, really chomping at the bit and don't care that we don't have speakers or a date or a venue lined up, which know it's going to be in Austin, <laughs> Texas in the spring. It might just be us. It yeah. Might. That's a hell of a CTA right there. <laughs> right. SmarterArtistSummit.com. But I think that um, our tribe has, uh, I think this is one thing they did last week. The was, tribe has spoken. It was to give us permission to be ourselves. And so that's me being ourselves. I'm not going to promise that you will, you know, be a billion dollar writer after you listen to it. And we're going to have amazing speakers. Maybe we'll have some hobo. So <laughs> I think we should have at least one hobo speaker. I think um, so too. Yeah, oh, just, I was dressed like one. So doesn't that count? Just before the, um, b- before we, we sign off, I really do want to say thank you so much to everyone who was there. Um, everyone who wanted to be there and couldn't, um, everyone who listens to the show every week and puts up with, you know, our shenanigans and our occasional good advice. Um, just, it, it really was, um, it was a life changing week for me. And, um, I just thought it would be something really cool and it was so much better than that. So thanks. And of course, thank you to Amy for putting it all together and just being, yes. being the linchpin that holds this company together. So thank you. All right. So I guess we're done. We'll um, join you next week for my final episode recording in Ohio. Actually, no, 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 that's not true because we're going to record an extra one to make up for my moving week. So I will be recording two more, but it doesn't really count. It's just one more week of recording. Are you going to destroy the set before you leave? Just like put holes in everything? <laughs> um, I, I will just uh, b- before before we no, no, I won't. But I just the I house is already to... sold, right? Could you burn it down? <laughs> and it's as is. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to uh, offer a shout out to the Disthrone Reverer off. It's the one you uh, mentioned earlier. So yeah. This is my first time watching. You guys are pretty interesting. So thank you. Another another convert to the tribe. So thank you. Um, so all right. So this will bring to a close episode 206. And we will see you all next time. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.